Hello everyone, this is my CR10. I want to go over all the upgrades that I've done on it to enable it to give me the best quality output in my prints. Every upgrade that I'll go over, I will put a link down below. And let's start. Uh, I originally bought it from Gearbest. I got it on the $280 deal, uh, or $380 deal but I actually had a bunch of Gearbest credit and it actually knocked it down quite a bit even more. Uh, it took me two months to get it, so quite a while to get it, but I, I know that some people had issues receiving it, but when it came to me, it was perfect. Everything went well, 15 to 20 minutes, I had it up and running and printing its first print. And I found that stock with no upgrades at all that it had better quality than my $900 printer. Uh, but I started doing all the upgrades. I actually had most of the upgrades printed before uh, this printer arrived on my other printer. But I did the, the wire bracket, which everyone does to protect their heat bed wires. I did the, uh, the bed level knobs to make them bigger so it's easier to level your bed. And then uh, I, I tried printing TPU and it didn't really work out, so then I printed uh, the fel flexible filament extruder upgrade up here. And then I used Saint Smart's TPU and it came out perfect. And actually this is one of the first prints. I had to do a little bit of calibration on it because it was uh, there was a little bit of stringing, but for the most part, for the very first TPU print, it came out great and it's really good stuff so I highly recommend this stuff. Then I got a lock build print uh, surface and uh, I usually for my other printer I, I usually just use hairspray on the glass and it works it works decent but I decided to get this lock build because the beds kind of warped um, I noticed that right off the bat that it was, it was a little warp especially when you start heating it up so this lock build is actually perfect. I've never had a print come up. I, I print PC polycarbonate and I've never had it warp on me from the bedside. Um, ABS doesn't warp, uh, PETG, everything sticks to it. And if you do a big print, it actually almost sticks too well to it. And it's actually hard to get off. Uh, the next upgrade that I did was I hated the stock spool holder. I thought it got in the way. I just I just didn't like it. So originally I upgraded to this spool holder. But the problem was when filament starts to run out, it's more tightly wound up and then with no there was no security to holding it in place and it would just always tip over when the filament was starting to get low. And so right here, I upgraded to this one. And I love this spool holder. I mean, nothing's gonna come out of it. It stays into place. One of the, my more important upgrades that I did was I did the dual Zs. Originally, my CR10, I know there's the new version of the CR10, but my CR10 came only with one stepper motor for the Z axis, and that's back here. Uh, I went to Tiny Machines, ended up just buying it off of there. I got an extra step promoter and a lead screw all the way up. And the, the whole reason why was I found that as my prints went higher up, my quality went down. I tried every trick. I tried to tighten all the belts. I tried to tighten the nut right here. What I did was I printed one of those rockets out and then it had layer shifts and all that kind of stuff. And then I left the STL file on my SD card and I did a, a switch of the dual Z's and did that same print that was on my SD card of the rocket. And when I printed it, no layer shift and the quality uh, stayed good all the way up to 300 millimeter or 400 millimeters. That's one upgrade I highly recommend uh, be done. One thing I did notice though, or I do notice uh, with the dual Z's, after almost every if you print for longer than six hours, I like to check each side of the rail right here on the z-axis. Well, the x-axis, but I'm checking. Uh, 
I'm checking, I check this with a, a tape measure. I just measure each side and I make sure that it's, uh, it's, it's perfectly the same on each side. And I notice that sometimes it will go off about one to two millimeters. And so I have to readjust it. And it's just a good thing to always check. Next was a two part upgrade. Basically, I want to be able to plant print polycarbonate and I wouldn't be able to with the stock extruder, which by the way, I have nothing bad to say about the stock, stock extruder. If you're printing PLA, PETG, or even ABS, it, it works rather well. But when you get up to higher material like polycarbonate and you have your extruder almost 280 to 285 degrees Celsius, you're gonna need all metals hot in. And I, I had an extra E3D V6 um, hot in. And so what I did was, I'll just take this off. So basically what I did was I took uh, the mount from Luke Ashley off of Thingiverse, his E3D mount, and I meshed it TDH IT Professionals mount for his ABL kit. Uh, Timothy, uh, sorry, I can't say your last name. I don't want to screw it up on this video. But uh, I used his mount and I meshed it with the E3D V6 mount. And uh, so it's all one piece. And this piece right here is all polycarbonate. This is an older E3D V6 um, printer head. So it didn't come with the silicone sleeve. So I just insulated it just so it can maintain high, high temperatures. Uh, ended up just using the stock heater block and the stock thermostat and it works fine. I can get to the temperatures I need and everything. Next I just uh, I meshed together an E3D mount and uh, the fang mount. I meshed it together and I cut a little bit off the fangs so the fangs don't hit the bed or the print while it prints. So it's a perfect clearance and it works really well, I haven't had any problems. I put a foil, aluminum foil right here. And I did that um, because someone in the comments said he used uh, PLA and it started melting because this part's kind of closer to the heater block. But I've been printing with uh, polycarbonate and it hasn't even softened. But I put it there just in case, but I, I really don't think you need it. And I printed this in PETG. All right, just like that. And it's really snug on there. Uh, I put a little couple strips of duct tape kind of make it even more snug, but it doesn't really need it. I just want to do that so then it kind of lowers the vibration as well. Next, I insulated the bed underneath and I used the method that a lot of people use. And I use this pipe wrap insulation tape Basically, this is what the insulation tape looks like. It has a sticky side right here, and then I just laid it underneath. I did two layers of that, and then I did foil tape on top. And I've seen a lot of people use that method. And I'll leave a link below of uh, uh, Timothy from TDH IT Professionals, how he did it. And just, you can follow that guide on how to insulate your bed. So next, I added these stepper dampers and I only did it on the X and the Y axis stepper motors. I, I was reading a lot on the Facebook group page and a lot of people do this and I haven't noticed anything quality wise if it increased my quality of my prints but what I did notice it reduces the noise of those stepper motors. It almost seems like it runs a lot smoother, so I'm guessing that it will help quality, but maybe not enough to notice. But if you're looking to quiet down your printer, then I highly recommend uh, these uh, stepper dampers. One of my latest updates that I've done was this Easy ABL sensor. And for a while, I knew I was gonna put an auto level system, but I didn't know what one. And I kept debating to myself well, whether to do the BL Touch or uh, do the, the Easy ABL. The BL Touch is a little more uh, cheaper. However, um, you're gonna have to ride a little bit of the firmware. And if you're not com comfortable with that, I wouldn't recommend it. For me, I, I'm pretty Arduino savvy 
and uh, I'm familiar with Marlin, so I was able to do that. And why I was debating the BL Touch is the BL Touch actually touches the surface. And while this one actually uses the heat of the surface, because it's detecting the heat of the bed and the bed's kind of warped, it's gonna have different heat in different areas. And it might be minor, so that might actually give you a little bit of deficiencies on the leveling. And that, that's what I was contemplating to myself, but then I decided because the face group, Facebook group, a lot of people use this sensor, and so if I needed help with the sensor at all, I know I could just contact the Facebook group, and I know uh, TDH IT professionals, I could just contact them if I needed any type of help. And so that's why I went that route. After I went this route, I had the perfect first layer on my very first print with this sensor after I did all my Z offsets. So this was a, a very good investment for me. Um, I found that it, it actually works. I mean, the BL Touch would work too, but I, for me, I'm just glad I went this route. So once you put an auto bed system, whether it be the ABL, BL Touch, or some other type of auto bed system, you don't need the springs here anymore. And I think uh, the guide, when you buy the Easy ABL, he gives you a, a manual. Um, I think it's somewhere it states that you don't need uh, the springs anymore because you don't need a level but you do want to make sure it's as flat as possible and um, all that kind of stuff so what I printed was these mounts uh, that go underneath the bed uh, to replace the springs because honestly I think the springs almost while it was heated it put a lot of strain on the corners and it, I think that actually aided in the the warpage of the bed because it was the aluminum that was warped not the glass for me at least and so i think without those springs it's going to help with uh going to help with uh warpage i did my own in fusion 360 here they are but i think uh tdh it professional now has them in their store so I don't think I'll put them into uh, Thingiverse but they are really easy to design with Fusion 360 uh, it took me like five minutes to design them I made them out of polycarbonate polycarbonate has a high heat resistance the polycarbonate solid bed mounts won't even uh, soften at 100 degrees Celsius plus I have an insulated bed so and it takes a few degrees off. Talk about the firmware a little bit. I did have to do upgrades to the firmware. Uh, I originally used uh, the Arduino file that uh, TDH IT professionals provide for the Easy ABL. Um, I don't think he has the Arduino file anymore. I think it's just a hex file now. But I, I grabbed the Arduino file before and I found that after I uploaded the firmware, I, you have to do a bootloader if you're using the stock motherboard. Just follow the instructions for the bootloader. It's, it's not that difficult. But I uploaded that firmware that was provided when I bought the Easy ABL sensor. And I found that everything was calibrated to the left. And so I just went through the Arduino and I fixed all the calibrations. Also I had to fix because I'm using that E3, E3DV6 mount, it, my offset was off in the Y direction, so I had to just set it back, I think 10 millimeters, um, and that fixed it perfect. So now everything is centered. The ABL sensor is now centered. I also changed up right here, where I just did a custom, hello Eric, CR10 ready. I did that um, just, just because, why not? I also had to adjust, and I don't know if the reason why I had to adjust the acceleration and jerk settings, uh, I did it directly in the firmware, but uh, I adjusted it because it just seemed like all my prints were off, no matter what speed I would print. So I made adjustments to it, and I don't know if it's because of this E3DV6, and this is like a heavier mount than stock, 
but once I made those adjustments, my print's been coming out very nicely. Also, I noticed before I forget, I was printing with a stock head. I had to print it at 50 millimeters per second to get the best quality out of my prints. With the E3D V6, I noticed if I went to 50 millimeters per second to 60 millimeters per second, there was no difference in quality. So I'm able to print a little bit faster with the E3D V6. But if I go above 65, um, I find that the print then starts to lose a little bit of quality, but it is faster. But for me, I'd rather have quality prints. So my next upgrade that doesn't really have to, anything to do with quality, just for uh, convenience, I guess, is Octopi. I, I gotta still develop a, a camera mount. Um, I'll probably just make one up on three, uh, Fusion 360, mount my camera in the corner. So I, this is my design. It's kind of a Raspberry Pi case that supports a little LCD monitor. I, I decided to use it for Octoprint and now I'm able to go through it and here's my camera right here I don't know how much of this you can see but I'm able to use the controls right here and I'm able to move the bed with the, with the controls so I can move the bed with the controls it just it just makes it easier to use and I'm able to control temperatures uh, if you're familiar with Octoprint you can do anything with Octoprint but so I'm able to see a screen here, but I'm able to log into my computer and set up prints from my computer and just do Wi-Fi prints through uh, from it. For my next upgrade, I think I'm gonna upgrade every single fan. All the fans in the control box and the, the, uh, the power supply, the PCU. I'm gonna replace the fan in there. Uh, replace the the 50 15 and the 40 millimeter fan uh, because they're all that's the loudest thing on this printer right now it's not a quality issue it's just a convenience all right so that concludes my video i find that all these upgrades that i've done so far have made my printer print so much better quality prints maybe not the fastest but they are really nice quality prints where if I print a helmet out or if I print anything that I need, I find that the work after it's done printing with sanding and all that stuff is actually minimum. Again, just a reminder that all these upgrades, I'll leave in a link below in case you want them. I'm not sure if I'll post those bed screws, maybe if enough people tell me that they want them. Uh, they're really easy to make. And here's a print that I just did earlier. It's the hairy line, but you could just see that the quality is perfect on this. The first layer is perfect. 